Egypt is a land of myth, legend, and loads of mystery. Its history goes back so far that we think of Cleopatra as ancient, and yet, to her, the pyramids were already so ancient that she had her own archaeologists investigate them. This is like the greatest hit of Ramses' victories. Ancient Egypt was unlike any other country in the world, and there's still so much that we don't know about it, and even some things we'd probably prefer not to know. Just ask the scientists who discovered what you're about to see in these videos. 15 Mysterious Discoveries in Egypt That Scare Scientists <laughs> Statue of Sekhmet These Egyptian sculptures are a prime example of one of the oldest known Egyptian deities, the lion-headed warrior goddess also known as Mistress of Dread and Lady of Slaughter. The Sekhmet statues, dating back to the New Kingdom during the 18th dynasty and later dynasties, can be found throughout Egypt. From excavations, Egyptologists have come across both completed, destroyed, and fragments of the statues. There have been more than 600 of them recovered, in fact. They provide us with valuable information on the Sekhmet goddess, Egyptian art, kings, religion, and culture of Egypt. Most of these Sekhmet statues were created under Amhotep the Great, the ninth pharaoh of this period. He hoped that the statues would heal him from illness and bring him good fortune. This is why there were so many Sekhmet statues being built at such a fast pace. Symbolized by her ferocious lion's face, the goddess Sekhmet is a menacing power of Egyptian myth. She brings sickness and calamity upon human beings. However, because she can also take them away again, the faithful revere her protective powers Many are still standing at excavation sites, while others are now in museums around the world. What scientists found in Egypt has left people speechless, probably because it's provocative in a sexy way. This is a good example of what Egyptian royalty, like Cleopatra, might have worn for their burial, specifically a queen. People in ancient Egypt wore jewelry to show their wealth and also as they believed that after doing this, they'll become more favored by the gods, especially in the afterlife. The many jeweler pieces worn included rings, earrings, bracelets, decorated buttons, necklaces, neck collars, and pendants. The rich, meanwhile, wore jewelry made out of gold and were often buried in gold masks. And showing a little skin was not an issue, as you can see. Women's fashions that bared the breasts were not a matter of concern. The upper-class women's dresses sometimes began below the breast and went to the ankles and gender-bending cosmetics were in fashion as well. Both men and women wore makeup. So, although some experts were at a loss for words when they discovered this, to ancient Egyptians, this midriff-bearing bejeweled breastplate was the height of style. Do you dig it or do you bury it? Comment below with the hashtag open discussion. Lost Golden City Archaeologists have hailed this discovery as one of the most important finds since the unearthing of Tutankhamun's tomb. The lost golden city is believed to be the largest ancient city found in Egypt, buried under sand for millennia. Uncovered near Luxor, home of the Valley of the Kings, the city is 3,000 years old. It's known by the name Aten. But with no success, within weeks of excavation, to the team's great surprise, formations of mud bricks began to appear in all directions. What they unearthed was the site of a large city in good condition of preservation, with almost complete walls and with rooms filled with tools of daily life. Items such as rings were unearthed, along with colored pottery vessels, scarab beetle amulets, and mud bricks bearing the seals of ancient Egypt's great pharaohs. After seven months of excavations, several neighborhoods were uncovered. The team said it was optimistic that further important finds would be revealed, noting it had discovered groups of tombs they reached through stairs carved into the rock. Exciting news! Over the years, more than 50 missions tried to locate what has been dubbed the largest ancient Egyptian settlement on the western bank of Luxor, but with no success. The Whale with Legs This creature, an ancestor of the modern-day whale, is believed to have lived 43 million years ago. Egyptian scientists identified the fossil of a four-legged prehistoric whale, unearthed over a decade ago in the country's western desert. This region is known for this so-called Whale Valley, a tourist attraction and the country's only natural World Heritage Site. 
The newly discovered creature belongs to a family of extinct semi-aquatic whales that would have walked on land but also hunted in the water. The fossil was first found by a team of Egyptian environmentalists in an area that was covered by seas in prehistoric times. It's a very important discovery because it documents one of the missing links in the history of the whale from living totally on land as a terrestrial animal to the fully aquatic whale that is living today. The transition took place over roughly 10 million years ago. Its length was approximately 10 feet and it weighed approximately 1,300 pounds. Therefore, it's one of the largest and most ferocious predators in the region where it lived 43 million years ago. The new species stands out for its elongated skull and snout which suggests it was a carnivore capable of grasping and chewing its prey. The Moving Mummies When you have to move some ancient mummies, why not make an event of it? Egypt recently held a special parade as it transferred 22 ancient royal mummies to a new museum in Cairo. Roads along the Nile were closed as the artifacts were transported from the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir Square to the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization in Fustat. Most are from the New Kingdom, also referred to as the Egyptian Empire, which ran between the 16th century BC and the 11th century BC. The mummies, 18 kings and 4 queens, were each transported by road in their own capsules filled with nitrogen to provide protection. The capsules were carried on carts that cradled them and provided stability including a full orchestra and a light show, people marched with drums and carried illuminated parcels as the ceremony got underway. The artifacts were discovered in two batches in a complex of mortuary temples in Luxor and at the nearby Valley of the Kings from 1871. The oldest mummy is that of the last king of the 17th dynasty, who reigned in the 16th century BC. According to Egyptologists, these are the kings of Egypt. These are the pharaohs. And so it's a way of showing respect. By doing it like this, it's hoped they'll spark renewed tourist interest in Egypt's collections of antiquities. The Hidden Places of Ramesses II Ramesses II, commonly known as Ramesses the Great, was the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty of Egypt. He's often regarded as the greatest, most celebrated, and most powerful pharaoh of the New Kingdom, itself the most powerful period of ancient Egypt. And recently, an excavation team stumbled on an undiscovered palace located in the ruins of the ancient Egyptian city of Abydos. It stands by the royal temple of this very famous pharaoh. The palace is made of limestone and mud brick with limestone floors. The team noticed a stone walkway at the temple's entrance to the southwest. Following it led them to this secret palace, which contained attention-grabbing examples of the cartouche, a hieroglyphic marking that denotes royalty. Rare cartouches are seen at the temple's four corners with intriguing depictions like Ramesses' birth and throne names painted in gold. The fact Ramesses II required a palace here also reveals that he didn't just order a new temple at the site but was spending enough time there to warrant such accommodation. And to archaeologists, to have a building in which this great pharaoh lived his life is always a fascinating thing to find. Tomb of Nefertiti Ramesses II's wife was clearly a very big deal. Discovered in 1904, the tomb of Nefertiti is one of the most spectacular and colorful tombs ever discovered. Some even call it the Sistine Chapel of ancient Egypt. In the Valley of the Queens, Nefertiti's tomb once held the mummified body and representative symbolisms of her consistent with most Egyptian tombs of the period. Nefertiti, which means beautiful companion, was the pharaoh's favorite wife. He went out of his way to make this obvious, referring to her as the one for whom the sun shines in his writings, built the temple of Hathor to idolize her as a deity and commissioned portraiture wall paintings. The tomb itself is primarily focused on the queen's life and on her death, but contemporary standards, the real value of the paintings found within the tomb is that they're the best preserved and most detailed source of the ancient Egyptians' journey toward the afterlife. Luckily, in 1995, the tomb was reopened to the public. Because of the potential for damage and deterioration to the fragile wall paintings caused by increased humidity, carbon dioxide, and microbiological activity introduced by visitors to the tomb, the number permitted to enter daily is strictly controlled by the Egyptian authorities. The Abu Simbel Temple this ancient temple complex in southern Egypt and located in the second cataract of the Nile River was originally cut into a solid rock cliff. The two temples which comprised the site were created during the reign of, yup, you guessed it, Ramesses II. 
It's certain, based on the extensive artwork throughout the interior of the Great Temple, that the structures were created at least in part to celebrate Ramesses' victory at the Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BCE. The Great Temple stands 98 feet tall and 115 feet long with four seated depictions of Ramesses II flanking the entrance, two to each side, each one 65 feet tall. Further statues represent his family members and various protecting gods and symbols of power. Passing between them through the central entrance, the interior of the temple is decorated with engravings showing them paying homage to the gods. The temples are also aligned with the east so that twice a year the sun shines directly into the sanctuary of the great temple. The location of the site was sacred long before the temples were built there and its thought was carefully chosen for this very reason. Serapium of Saqqara the Serapium of Saqqara has been a continuous source of speculation and mystery since its rediscovery in 1850. Even now, no theory has been able to explain exactly how or why the 24 giant sarcophagi were moved to the site and precisely installed in their notches. Located northwest of a necropolis just 12 miles south of the Great Pyramid of Giza, it's believed that this place was a burial place for API's bulls, which were believed to be the incarnations of an ancient Egyptian deity. Over a time span of approximately 1,400 years, over 60 bulls have been attested to have been entered here at the Saparium. As for the tombs themselves, weighing over 100 tons are made of gold. These strange and coffin-shaped black boxes are so well constructed that some experts think they were not built by the ancient Egyptians. Plus, the size of the boxes exceed the size of the bulls. Was it done to provide extra comfort for them? Why did they make the Serapium sarcophagi out of granite and not limestone? a material much easier to work with. And if it was the burial site for the bulls, where are the bull mummies? These questions remain unanswered, much to the frustration of the experts who study this sacred site. The Valley of Golden Mummy The Valley of the Golden Mummies is a huge burial site at the Baharia Oasis in the western desert of Egypt. Discovered in 1996, an excavation team found around 250 mummies over several seasons, however, the site has more than this number, according to the excavator, even more than 10,000. There were four general styles of mummies. The first style, which was found on approximately 60 mummies, has a gilded mask covering the face and a gilded waistcoat depicting different scenes of gods and goddesses across the chest. The second style is covered with cartoonage, depicting scenes of gods such as Anubis, the god of mummification, and his four children. The third style was not decorated with gold but rather was placed inside an anthropoid, a pottery coffin. The fourth style was covered in linen. These mummies represent the very best mummies ever found in Egypt. The mummies found here show that people during this period were wealthy because they were able to afford these elaborate burials, hence the golden mummy moniker. Plus, artifacts had been buried with each of them, including jewelry bracelets, pottery of food trays, wine jars, and coins. The site has, by far, the largest number of mummies found in a single site anywhere in Egypt. Egyptian Stonehenge Located in Africa, Napta Playa was once a largely internally drained basin in the Nubian Desert, located approximately south of modern-day Cairo in Egypt. The Napta Playa archaeological site, one of the earliest of the Egyptian Neolithic period, dates back to 7500 BC. The origins of this site provide the earliest signs of Egyptian civilization. Ancient societies all around the world erected massive stone circles like this, aligning them with the sun and stars to make solstices. These early calendars foretold the coming of the seasons, helping civilizations track when to plant and harvest crops. They were also connected with religion and served as special ceremonial sites. It's unique not only for its age, but also for the ancient astronomy coded into these stone alignments. For most lost ancient civilizations, the knowledge of the movements of the stars was held in the utmost importance. For the ancient Egyptians, just before the sun appeared on the horizon, the star relative to its stone would have risen perfectly overhead. Today, researchers believe the Napta Playa tells us that this desert's original inhabitants may have had more advanced knowledge of astronomy and mathematics than previously thought. Dendera Light Can you see it? It looks like an ancient depiction of a modern-day light bulb. Known as the Dendera Light, this artifact on a wall is in one of the most preserved ancient temples in Egypt. And it poses the question, 
did ancient Egyptians have electric lamps? By the looks of it, it could be construed to be a bulb with a socket at one end, a cable traveling underneath, and a cord filament inside, just like a light bulb. Located at the Upper Egyptian Temple Complex of Dendera, it's been a major source of controversy in Egyptian history, since many French historians interpret the depiction as evidence of a modern lighting system. The mainstream view among Egyptologists interprets the reliefs as a combination of a lotus flower, a pillar, a symbol of stability symbolized in the outstretched arms, and a snake rising from the flower through the womb of Nut, the goddess of the sky. Inscriptions around the Dendera light support this view, since these reference the rising sun, which will spring out of a lotus flower in the shape of a snake god. Despite the proof against electrical technology in ancient Egypt, the reliefs continue to stir up controversy as Swedo scientists attempt to cling to any proof of advanced technological inventions in ancient people. Mummified Crocodile when archaeologists found hundreds of crocodile mummies on an expedition to northern Egypt in 1899, they were annoyed. They were searching for human mummies and artifacts, not croc mummies, but when they found papyrus, paper's earliest ancestor, stuffed inside one of the mummies with text written on it by Egyptians thousands of years before, they were suddenly interested. Surprisingly, instead of collecting the mummies, they began to break them open, remove the papyrus and discard the crocodiles. Now, more than 120 years later, 19 mummified crocodiles remain. Crocodiles were a constant threat to the ancient Egyptians. They lived in all regions, in swamps and marshes and along the Nile River, and there were a ton of them. Some Egyptian tomb walls are decorated with scenes that show herdsmen performing magical spells to ward off crocodiles before they crossed the Nile with their cattle on a wooden boat or platform. In ancient Egypt, mummified animals were prized as votive offerings, intermediaries between mortals and the gods, and incarnations of different deities. The mummified crocodiles give us clues about how everyday ancient Egyptians lived and how far they went to appease crocodiles, hoping their devotion could win them some goodwill toward humankind. Ship to the Afterlife the boats of ancient Egypt were large ships that were made out of cedar, wood, and historians and archaeologists have had long debates about their purpose of them. However, most likely these boats were manufactured to be used in the funerary rituals of the king and maybe some of his royal family members. When the Egyptian antiquities inspectors responsible for the area of Giza were finishing their work at the pyramids, they found what seemed to be a wall made out of limestone. After a lot of digging in the ground, Everybody who was there smelled the distinctive scent of the cedar wood. That's when they discovered the Khufu boat, a ship to the afterlife. The discovery of this ship is quite unique. It was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh's barge buried inside his funeral pyramid and one of the oldest, largest, and best preserved vessels from antiquity. For four and a half millennia, it lay undisturbed in its limestone sarcophagus. Measuring 143 feet long and 19 and a half feet wide, the vessel was no easy rescue. It took 20 months for a team of experts to painstakingly reconstruct it. The 4,600-year-old ship was reportedly so well designed that it could still sail if launched back onto the Nile today. A real-life Atlantis Vanished beneath the waters of the Mediterranean are two lost cities at the mouth of the Nile. At the time, it was one of Egypt's most important commercial centers for trade with the Mediterranean world and was a major center for the worship of the Egyptian gods. Their amazing discovery is transforming our understanding of the deep connections between the great ancient civilizations of Egypt and Greece. The two cities were founded around the 8th century BC as the obligatory point of entry to Egypt for all ships coming from the Greek world. However, they suddenly sank to the depths of the Mediterranean Sea due to unknown reasons, but a popular theory holds that a massive earthquake caused the ground on which the cities were built to liquefy. Now, the site of the underwater cities is sort of like an underwater Pompeii, but it's about four times larger than the ancient Roman city. Excavations began off the coast of Alexandria, where relics from the ancient cities have been buried underwater for more than 1,000 years and more than 200 spectacular ancient Egyptian treasures buried here for more than a thousand years travel to a museum in Britain for a blockbuster exhibition in 2016. The Great Sphinx It's probably Egypt's most iconic historical monument, the Great Sphinx of Giza. It's among the world's largest sculptures, measuring some 240 feet long and 66 feet high. 
It features a lion's body and a human head adorned with a royal headdress. The statue was carved from a single piece of limestone, and pigment residue suggests that the entire Great Sphinx was once painted. Remnants of red can be found on the statue's face, while hints of blue and yellow remain on the body. According to some estimates, it would have taken about three years for a hundred workers using stone hammers and copper chisels to finish the statue. Dating back over 4,000 years, it's greatly deteriorated over the years, and since ancient times, various efforts have been undertaken to preserve the statue. Whereas the body has suffered the most erosion, the face has also been damaged and its nose is totally missing. According to some, the damage was caused by Napoleon's troops, who shot off the nose with a cannon. However, illustrations that date before Napoleon reveal a noseless sphinx. Another theory contends that it may have been mutated in the 14th century in protest. Regardless, nothing screams Egypt more than this great sphinx. The more we explore ancient Egypt, the more we learn about our history on this planet. Throw in some unexplainable mysteries and maybe some alleged alien intervention, and we get more discoveries that even scare the experts.